Well, I certainly hope so, because what COVID is doing is shedding another bright light on a systemic problem that has been with us for a very long period of time. In fact, even a little bit of a double whammy for the minority communities, particularly the African-Americans, is that not only do they have a higher incidence and prevalence of the comorbidities that make it more likely that you will have a complicated course of infection leading to a serious disease, possibly hospitalization and even death, that the relative proportion of these comorbidities in people of color is significantly greater than that of the population in general. The other thing is that the social determinants of health put people of color in a position because of employment, socioeconomic status, availability of jobs. They put them in a position that is more likely for them to be in contact with an infected person and not able to physically separate themselves. So they have a greater risk of A, getting infected, and B, a greater risk of once they are infected, winding up with a complication that is above and beyond the rate of complications of others. So this is another, another assault, <laughs> as it were, on people of color, because if you look at other diseases, HIV in the United States, we're talking today about the 30th anniversary of the IAS conference. If you look at HIV in this country, 13% of the population is African American, and yet up to 50% of the new infections are among African Americans, if you're a male, and about 60% if you're a woman. So here again, a greater burden of disease is being seen in the people who are minority groups, particularly people of color. 